Now we're going to examine features and components and things you're going to need to know about the Telepresence C60 and C40 codecs. These are codec units that allow us to have video conferences. You're going to connect external microphones, you're going to connect external cameras, you're going to connect an external display. Once you've got all that done, well, then you can connect it to the network and have a Telepresence meeting. And in this module, we're going to go over the characteristics. And that's going to help you if your job is to manage a Telepresence collaboration deployment that uses these codecs. Before we get started, we're going to take a look at what these telepresence units look like. We've done a search, Cisco Telepresence Codec, C40 and C60, and we can see them here. These are the codecs that we use when we have our own display, camera, speaker. They look a lot like stereo receivers, and I don't know about you, but I've always been fascinated with home entertainment systems. We've got all these different inputs and outputs, trying to connect everything and just hear sound while being able to watch television. It's like solving a major puzzle. Well, it's kind of like that when it comes to working with these telepresence codecs. But fortunately, we've got some great documentation. Cisco does an excellent job of showing us diagrams of what we need to get it all working. Configuring a C-series codec is going to be a different experience for you if you're used to configuring Cisco endpoints. Cisco endpoints use Linux. These C-series codecs don't. Let's take a look at how we're going to manage our C60 codec. It's going to start with the configuration tab. This is on the web interface, and this contains information regarding the sign-in banner. Here, let me show you. From a web search of Cisco Telepresence C60 web interface, we can see the interface that we use to connect to and configure our C60 codec. And speaking of the web interface, which is also called the on-screen menu, this cannot be used in order to perform a factory reset. If we're going to do a factory reset on a C60 codec, we're going to have to connect a serial cable and then reboot the system. We have to be in the same room as the C60. The Cisco C60 and C40 codecs use option keys to enable premium features. Some examples of needing an option key would be to enable remote monitoring, or multi-site, or premium resolution. There are other features that do not need an option key, and that's what I want to highlight here. We do not need an option key, we do not need to purchase a license and then install it in order to use dual display, not on a C60 or a C40. We do not need an options key if we want to run high definition, and we will not need an options key on the C40, C60 if we want to present. Those are all built-in features on these codecs. Going back to the web interface, there are some options that are available to normal users. Diagnostics and system information, call control, and maintenance in order to restart. These options are available to normal users. We do not need to be an administrator in order to use these. Now we're going to talk a little bit about FIPS, the Federal Information Processing Standard. This is a United States and Canadian government standard that specifies security requirements for cryptographic modules. The C-Series codecs are certified to use this standard. And if we do, this is what's going to happen. All of our calls are going to be encrypted. Telnet, HTTP, can't be used. IEEE 802.1x, which is port-based security, users have to authenticate before the switch will allow their traffic to permeate through the switch port. Well, that and SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, are disabled if we're using FIPS. The root user account is disabled. Software upgrades are also disabled. And FIPS cannot be disabled. So all of these are going to be the consequence on your C-Series codecs if you decide to get your FIPS on. So just make sure that these settings are not going to interfere with something that you're going to need. If you do decide to enable FIPS encryption, just remember that FIPS mode cannot be disabled without a factory reset. So we're going to have to physically connect to our codec with the serial port and then initiate a reset if we want to disable our FIPS encryption. There's a variety of C60 network diagnostic tools available. We can use the command system tools, network ping if we want to ping an IP address. We can also use the command system tools network trace route to trace a path to a destination. Each device that we go through that's available will respond to our trace route. And so we'll know, well, we can get through that router. Then we'll try again. If it goes through a second router, we'll get notification from it. And now our device will know, hey, I can get through two routers. Let's try for three. And it will continue this process with the trace route. These system tools commands are part of the operating system that make up the C-Series codec. What they're not able to do are use Cisco utils commands because those are reserved for Linux. So for instance, you could not use the command utils network ping. That's not going to work. We'd have to use the system tools network ping. So depending on the codec that you're configuring, that will determine which type of command you're going to use when troubleshooting. 